So in this screencast, we will look at the four categories of human health risk, briefly describe them, and then spend some time on biological uh, categories of human health risk. A separate video will be made for chemical. So the four major categories are physical, biological, chemical, and lifestyle. Physical is anything that physically happens to the body that causes harm. So that would be something like a car accident, being hit by a car, work-related deaths, in particularly construction injuries, natural disasters like hurricanes and floods, exposure to ultraviolet radiation, which may be even just overexposure to the sun, leading to skin cancer, for example, um, exposure to x-rays or radioactivity. All of those cause physical human health risk. The second category is biological, and that's the biggest category. About 75% of human health risks are biological. And so it includes diseases, both infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. So a non-infectious disease is something that's not spread. It just happens to the body. So that could be something like heart disease, for example. Infectious disease is something that spreads from person to person or in any other way, um, and that is also a very large cause of biological um, human health risk. The third one is chemical, and we look at that a lot in environmental, subs in environmental science. We want to know whether substances, whether natural or anthropogenically occurring, are toxic. And if they are, the ways in which they're typically toxic is to cause cancer, birth defects, disrupt the immune system or the endocrine system, or disrupt the nervous system. We've already talked about how things like lead, arsenic, pesticides, and solvents affect these various systems. For example, lead causing damage to the nervous system, which makes children um, have lower IQs and may even lead to uh, more violence. So we'll, that's a separate category that we'll spend some time on as well. And the fourth category that I've put up here for your consideration is lifestyle. So that includes obesity. Obesity would generally overlap with the category of biological, causing diseases um, uh, like heart disease as a result of obesity. Smoking, again, crosses over with biological. It harms the lungs and the heart and so forth. Drugs also crosses over with the biological, um, things like opioid addiction, which can lead to death. Um, alcohol actually crosses over sort of biological, sort of chemical. Um, alcohol can be biological, fall into the biological category when it harms, say, the liver or other organ systems. It may also follow in, fall into the category of chemical. So, for example, if someone drinks a lot of alcohol or, or even very little alcohol when pregnant, that can affect the um, offspring quite severely. Um, a fourth one, which I don't have up here, which would also be lifestyle, which crosses over to biological, would be unprotected sex, which could lead to um, a venereal disease, a disease like HIV being passed along, so an infectious disease. So again, those are the four categories, and biological makes up about 75% of them. So let's look a little more carefully at biological risks. They fall into two major categories, non-infectious disease and infectious disease. Non-infectious disease, just something that happens to the body without an agent that passes from one thing to another and causing illness. So infectious diseases are defined as those that are caused by an infectious agent known as a pathogen. Pathogens come in many forms. They can be bacteria, which are single-celled organisms without a true nucleus. Their DNA is just loose in there, but they have DNA. Viruses, which are a pathogen but technically not considered living because they only have RNA and depend on DNA of other organisms in order to multiply. 
fungi, um, things like um, toenail fungus, um, jock itch, all of those types of things are fungi. Protists are aquatic organisms that don't really fall quite into all any of these other particular categories. They're generally modal. They have um, a nucleus. They have DNA and they can make people sick through water. Parasitic worms, so that would be things like your heartworm for your dog. Um, it's really awful looking. If you ever have time to go on the internet and look at a picture of what happens, the parasites lay their eggs in the dog's um, body, and worms eventually grow from those and actually surround the heart. It's just truly an awful illness. Okay, so some examples of diseases that are infectious diseases are pneumonia. Pneumonia can be um, caused by a bacteria or a virus, but it's when the, the lungs um, have a deep infection. In some other countries, there are problems with typhoid and polio, which have basically been um, taken care of here in the United States, but continue to be a problem elsewhere. Venereal diseases, which are sexually transmitted diseases. Um, HIV, which causes AIDS, tetanus, which we have a vaccine for, malaria, which is a huge problem in some parts of the world, um, particularly Asia and Africa, kills millions of people, yellow fever, and influenza. Influenza can actually be bacterial or viral type, mainly here we're talking about viral. So infectious diseases have killed huge numbers of people. There are several types of plague, but the big one is bubonic plague. And over the centuries, it's actually killed hundreds of millions of people before the 20th century. Now we actually have um, antibiotics that can be used against the bacteria that causes some types of plague. We even had plague still existing here in the United States, particularly in the West, and it's carried by rodents and fleas uh, from those rodents when the rodent dies, then can seek um, humans as a source, and that's how it's transmitted. But the good news is here in the United States, we do have antibiotic treatment for that. Malaria is a disease that's mos mosquito transmitted, and it's estimated that about a million per million people per year die from this, and most of them are children ages five and younger. I have some more recent data from the CDC where in 2018, there were 228 million people infected with malaria. And of those that year, um, 405,000 died. So that's a considerable number of people. If you compare these numbers, which I hope to do during the course of this um, lecture, to the numbers that we're looking at for things like SARS or uh, COVID-19, the numbers for malaria and plague are actually staggering. We'll also look at the Spanish flu, the flu of 1918, and we'll talk about um, the staggering number of people that um, were infected and staggering number of people who died here in the U.S. and elsewhere. So continuing on with the this examination of infectious diseases, let's first look at how infectious diseases spread. All right, so here we have a person who is on the receiving end of an infectious disease. They may have obtained that infectious disease by drinking water, by breathing in airborne particles that contain a bacteria or virus. They can get the food from ingesting it in food. From wild animals, insects such as mosquitoes, ticks, and wild animals such as rats. They can even have the disease transmitted from domesticated animals and pets, and of course, other humans. Now, let's look at some emergent diseases. Emergent diseases are diseases that were not known to have existed, probably didn't exist until recent times. Usually, 
um, we would say 30 years or less. So one of the big ones, of course, is HIV, which causes AIDS. Um, HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. And um, it is a disease where the virus attacks the human's immune cells. And therefore, that leaves the person unable to fight other diseases that they would normally be able to fight off, but they can succumb to um, these other diseases because their immune system has been damaged. It was first found in 1981. And since that time, we've come a tremendous way in managing HIV infection and tremendous way in, in treatments. The sooner this disease is diagnosed, the sooner a person can start medication and very good survival, if not perfectly normal lives, then ensue. Okay, Ebola is one you may also have heard of. Ebola is caused by a virus. And in the last five years or so, there have been some um, emerging infections of this or spreads of this in Africa. And it actually has been around since 1976. The problem with Ebola is that the death rate is very high from Ebola. And it can be spread person to person. And even when a person has passed away, um, someone preparing the body for a funeral can also become infected with Ebola. Mad cow disease is something that you may have heard of as well. And it gets its name because the cow begins to stumble around before then passing away. Mad cow disease is a really interesting disease in that it's not caused by a bacteria or a virus. It's caused by a newly discovered, not totally understood object called a prion. A prion is a protein, and proteins are three-dimensional structures that fold in a very particular way. So fold your hand into a fist, and that might be the structure of the protein when it's normal. A prion is a protein, like if you then make a fist with your right hand, it's a, the same exact chemical makeup, but it's folded in a different way, so it doesn't match. Your left hand and your right hand don't match. If you had a key to unlock your left hand, it would be the opposite of a key that would be needed to unlock your right fist. And because that of that, the proteins um, are no longer usable. And so one prion protein will eventually convert all of the other um, normal proteins around it to an abnormally folded protein, and then this leads to brain damage and death. So mad cow disease was a disease that has been primarily located in the United Kingdom. We have a few cases in the United States, but it does appear that those came from people who had either been living and working in Canada or born and raised in Canada. It's a very slow disease to develop, so it wasn't really known right away. Um, the other problem with mad cow disease is how it became introduced into um, cattle that people eat. And a while back, a long time ago, there was a practice of feeding cows that died to other cows, adding that to the feed. And so that included brain. And so the brain of a cow that was infected with this prion would then be eaten by other cows, which also then developed the disease. Now that practice has since been stopped, um, but that was the original origin of mad cow disease. So next we have bird flu. A bird flu was a virus, is caused by a virus that has been transmitted from wild birds and also sometimes those wild birds 
infect domesticated birds like 